What's up everyone? Welcome to today's video. Welcome to the Video Game Fry School channel. Thank you very much for tuning in. In one of my last videos, a audience member asked me a question and said, why are Xbox consoles not selling and what could Xbox do to actually increase its console sales? I made a response video because I thought a lot of people still don't understand Xbox's business plan because they understand that their consoles are not going to sell as much as PlayStation consoles. In knowing this, they decided that they were going to pivot. The pivot was even in the Xbox One generation, and it's just now coming full circle, and that's when some people are finally waking up to it because they've stayed in the console ecosystem for a very long time. So let's go ahead and point out some of the basic reasonings, and we're also going to look at the comment because I thought it was a very interesting comment. So to that video, somebody responded and said, your logic is fundamentally flawed. Well, I'm following the market trend. I'm not necessarily pointing out anything that I think is a logical argument. I'm just pointing out the market trends. So maybe I made an argument in there that they think, you know, is probably not coherent. I'll have to basically go back and watch that video again. And they said the Xbox has failed as a console because it's failed to provide consistent, compelling content. And this was back in the Xbox One generation. This is not necessarily now in this generation because the effects from that generation was what were being felt now in this, in this particular generation. That's why the Xbox Series consoles have only sold half of what the PlayStation 5 and the PlayStation ecosystem has sold. Another argument I made in that video was Xbox actually knows that its console sales is a subsidy business more than anything else. So yes, there is the part of them getting a loss on each console that they sold that also compels them to still keep spending money on finding ways to make other platforms an Xbox ecosystem at the end of the day. So it's a twofold argument. You can say they lost the Xbox One generation, which Phil Spencer basically said, no one is arguing against that. And also there is a subsidy market that Xbox loses $200 on every Xbox console sold. That's a fact. I'm not using any logic to just throw that out there. Why would I want to lose $200 on every console sold every time when I can find another person that will buy my software, which is pretty much the main goal of even having the hardware anyways. I mean, look at Matthew Humphrey's article over here. It says Microsoft loses up to $200 on every console sold. The hope, that is, the hope is that the loss will be made back from accessories, subscriptions, and purchases. Business 101. No one is exempt for this because this person went ahead and said, PlayStation has provided that content. That's why gamers are willing to pay $1,000 for a mid-gen refresh while Xbox struggles to sell their consoles for $300. Hold on. PlayStation themselves understand that they are not immune from this. And Sony had to come out in 2021. They no longer are making this claim anymore to say that their 499 PS5 no longer sells at a loss. Matthew Humphreys writes these two articles, both for the PlayStation console and the Xbox console. Here's something that Matthew Humphreys actually buries in the first paragraph here. I'm not saying he did it on purpose, but here it is. It says that the PS5 digital edition right now is not yet prof at the time you wrote the article was not profitable. So even PlayStation themselves were eating a loss and they were offsetting that loss through peripherals, accessories, and the continued sales of the PS4 console. So already the PlayStation 5 itself was also eating a loss, but it was a different model of the PS5. So at the end of the day, what, were, what was PlayStation going to use to offset the loss? Accessories, game sales, and peripherals. Because this audience member of mine concludes that Sony's hardware has been profitable almost since launch, which we are not yet certain of. So we must follow the market movement in order to be able to get exactly what is going on here. So when Xbox made its pivot in 2017, it was already looking beyond the console by two major changes that it, it made. One of them was Game Pass. And then the other one was in looking for ways to acquire new content to put on Game Pass. At the same time, it was also checking out the cloud market. I remember back then, they put out, uh, you know, the opportunity for people to be able to beta test X Cloud. That's what it was going to be called at the time. Well, that's what the beta was called. This was where you could get your cell phone, you get your Xbox controller, they let you in, and there was like a series of games that you could play. I remember Tekken 7 was one of them. There was another Capcom game, and you could test these games out and see what the latency looked like. I remember playing Tekken 7 
with almost no latency on a hundred dollar cheapo Motorola phone. And I was like, this is crazy that cloud gaming can actually do something like this. And you know, what's even crazy. I took that phone out to the country where family lived to test out on their internet. And I was quite surprised how good it was. Now they probably put up their best foot forward in the beta testing, but you could tell that at the time Xbox was trying to move away from the dependence of the console at the point. Now, yes, there is some element of accuracy in what Kevin uh, Kevin Kendall says here in this particular comment, which the past generation Xbox was not bringing content at the time. However, in this generation, whoa, having purchased Activision and Bethesda, Xbox now has more content in terms of first party than PlayStation. They have so much content. They don't even have to worry about money hatting anymore because PlayStation has basically been money hatting for the most part and been padding up their launches and padding up a lot of the titles. It's not been that PlayStation has just had all these, you know, games. In fact, they've pushed PlayStation so hard that PlayStation is now in the remaster zone. PlayStation has now gotten the nickname called remaster station because PlayStation doesn't have as much first party content coming in terms of new games. So now that Xbox has all this content and doesn't have as much content sales, as I said, content sales, console sales, it's obvious now that their strategy is now stronger than PlayStation's strategy because PlayStation has bet all of its horses. It's bet, you know, it's basically put all of its eggs, sorry, and bet on the horse that is its console, but doesn't really have any content to go with it. Xbox took a step away from that particular paradigm and decided that it was going to go ahead and find a different means. And now it has content that it can deliver. So it has content and it has a bigger audience that it can actually sell content to, which has now made it become the industry leader. You see, the whole talk about the market leader for the most part in terms of console sales was very, you know, was very interesting, it was good that we had those conversations and it was good that we recognized the area which PlayStation was leading in. But no longer is that a constraint for Xbox. And that's why when PlayStation's insomniac leak came to light, they felt threatened by PlayStation, they, they felt, uh, sorry, threatened by Xbox. This is why you got to see them actually talking about, oh, the competition has le has leaped and has, has actually leapfrogged us. And, you know, our pillars are outdated and behind the competition because out of nowhere, once the acquisition went through, there was nothing they could do about it. They'd bet on the console. They'd done everything. They spent money, money hatting on all this stuff. Rather than improve their ecosystem and improve their platform, they were dallying, doing all these petty squabbles. And Xbox was not really interested in those petty squabbles. So look at even PlayStation looking and saying, crap, Microsoft can supply multi-game subscription, 50%, console games, 50%, and PC, 60%. So somewhere, somehow we don't push these guys out of the, you know, so far away from the, you know, console market. They're now ahead of us. That's literally what the business conclusion has come down to. So again, shout out to the comment, but I think you're probably not paying attention to the reality that the market has basically changed significantly. This person said a PC centered console like the Steam Deck is proof why consoles will be around for a while. No, it's not. The Steam Deck is a handheld hybrid <laughs> it actually proves that people will be interested in pc gaming if it were simplified because there is in my opinion a side to pc gaming that a lot of people are now more aware to and have gotten the taste of which is the consoles you know what the consoles did they went ahead and opened the, piece, the, the console players eyes to what pc gaming has been enjoying for the longest time which is better frame rates no subscription cost and cheaper games those are huge benefits. And this is why you're seeing the Steam Deck basically get a huge boost. The Rogue Ally get a huge boost. Even though the Rogue Ally is more expensive than the Steam Deck, people are paying for it from the console side. Isn't that something? Ah, so again, there's a lot of nuance here in this conversation. And I really appreciate the, you know, the, the I really appreciate the comment. I think we can probably maybe even continue this conversation in a separate video because, yeah, there are some things that are actually said here that I think are actually solid. Yes. Console gaming is there. I mean, it's not going to go anywhere like you. You are correct. Yes, you are correct. That console gaming is not going to go anywhere. And this is why I laugh and see when people are saying Xbox is going to get out of the console game. They're not. Some people like consoles. They do. They really enjoy them. I like them in some regard, but the fact that they will tell me that they can do all the stuff that PCs can do and it's not close, that's where I get mad at the console makers. So thanks so much for watching the video. Thanks so much for the comment. I really do appreciate it. I enjoy the conversation. Let's keep this up. Let's go ahead and, you know, do another video and kind of talk about a little bit more stuff with nuance in this whole conversation. It's very interesting. Thanks again. Peace out.